All right, John, what's the topic for today? Well, I think we should hit on again, um, if we haven't already, uh, the several things I write on the board at the beginning of every semester, and then I repeat them throughout the semester. Of course, uh, one is um, audience and purpose. You know, who's your audience? What's your purpose? Uh, that's the two constraints any writer or any artist, I think, has to face when he or she puts pen to paper or chisel to marble or what have you, uh, paintbrush to um, whatever he or she is painting. Uh, canvas. But I think we should. And yeah, then we already, and, and just yes. as, a, as a side note, we did a uh, video on audience and purpose already, so look for that. Okay, so um, I think, I, I tell my students I really uh, do this and, and repeat it throughout the semester to kind of, uh, you know, uh, ingrain in them what I think are really important, six words, three and three, quid pro quo, scratch your itch, so talk about scratch your itch. Um, and when I say this, I constantly iterate. By the way, did I ever talk about how I hate the word reiterate? No, Seems do. redundant. I think oh, it's well. important. Iter iterate means to say again, and reiterate means to repeat again. So, if, I mean, it sounds like this is completely redundant to me. Uh, why not just say I want to iterate rather than I want to reiterate? Because you're saying, like, I want to say, I want to say, to my, to my ear. But anyway. All right, so uh, iterate. Yeah, let me iterate that... Um, don't scratch your parents' itch, and don't scratch society's itch, and don't scratch your girlfriend or your boyfriend's itch, and scratch your itch. But the problem is most people when they're 19, 20, 22, 23 don't have the slightest idea what they really want to do in life. It comes later in life, oftentimes when it's too late, but to me it's never too late. But um, you got to find that itch, and not to make money unless that's your itch, but to, to have an enjoyable life. Um, a couple of examples I think I told you before about scratching your itch. You never know what your itch is sometimes. And one of my students went to, I think I was making about um, $33,000, $34,000. At the time, one of my students went to Michigan uh, Law School after he graduated from Michigan. Of course, we kept in close contact. And he... Um, Signed for 148,000, and I've been teaching for like 30 years, and he signs uh, for a law firm on Wall Street and making 148,000 starting out, and uh, and good for him because he liked that, and uh, and money is nice. I'm not you know saying it's not nice, but anyway, the point is, um, I think I told this story before. He went uh, seven years, he got. Uh, um, in the line for a promotion after seven years to a partner. And then on the 8th of, um, I think it was the 8th of March or April, I think it was 2008, um, the boss called him in and fired him and about 150 other uh, people that were up for, for a partnership, partnership because the economy was falling. Anyway, this the point is, is, yeah, this, is the, this is the eve of the, of the financial crisis, 2000, right. 2009 then, yeah, okay. But so he, he didn't know what to do. He had, he had saved, thank God he saved a lot of money because he made a lot of money in his um, yearly um, uh, dividends at the end of every month, every uh, year. But Bonuses, anyway, he yeah. um, went to uh, back to Vermont where he was from and his mother had a um, Montessori school there. And so he had nothing to do and no one was hiring lawyers at that time because the economy was so depressed. And so he started uh, helping his mom in the, uh, uh, Montessori school, and he found an itch, a real itch that he wanted to scratch. He loved uh, teaching kids, and eventually, because he had such a, a bundle of money from his uh, all the years he'd worked as a Wall Street lawyer, he invested. He bought himself a Montessori school, and he tells me now that he can't believe he ever, you know, went to work as a lawyer in Wall Street. Some people, of course, love it and good for them, but he has now found his itch, which he's scratching. He uh, teaches and owns a Montessori school in Vermont, or I don't know where he is now, Maine, I can't remember. I think it's Vermont. So but the thing is, you gotta, you have to search sometimes for your itch. It just doesn't come in an epiphany to you. How many know. of your students, so this is you know, it's the University of Michigan. These are relatively high-end students, present company accepted. And, you know, they're... They've been driven. They're often from upper, upper middle class and beyond backgrounds. So there's there's all sorts of economic, um, you know, levels represented at the university. I don't know if you have any insight into how many kids show up with just this sort of plan baked in without a whole lot of understanding of what their own desires are versus what there's the societal. When you say scratch your itch, what you're really saying is you know, follow your bliss is the Joseph Campbell version of that, right? 
find oh, what, what is yeah. meaningful to you and what you can, what where your skills align with, um, with your interests essentially, right? So I mean, how often is this a revelation to students when you when you write scratch your itch on the board? I think uh, I think sometimes it doesn't happen right away. I'm not I'm not hoping it does. I'm just giving them an alternative lifestyle, which I think I found my itch, so I scratched it. Um, right. And um, I can I can think of, think of several examples. Um, one one of my students who was a uh, top not not engineering, uh, well actually he was a partner in a big engineering firm in California. And uh, he was happy as an, an engineer, but he'd always wanted to be a, believe it or not, a forest ranger. Hmm. And so um, he, he, you know, as he moved up in the hierarchy of the company, he, um, you know, became like a vice president, senior vice president, what have you. And there was more and more pressure and less and less engineering. So finally, he just one day said, fuck it and quit. And he became a forest ranger. And he is so happy. And he said, I, I wish I would have become a forest ranger 34 years ago. Of course, 34 years ago, 20, 30 years ago, he wouldn't have known he wanted to be a forest ranger. He hadn't found that itch. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the doctor I told you about that um, was an um, uh, orthopedic surgeon. He said, you know, if you've taken apart one knee, you've taken apart 10,000 knees. And so anyway, what happened to him is he um, decided he didn't, after four or five years as an orthopedic surgeon, he um, decided that uh, he should be a lawyer, maybe. So he went to law school. And I think I told you that story about how he made uh, his money by uh, covering for a, uh, once a week for covering for a uh, medical malpractice on the weekends, once a week, once a month rather. Hmm. And uh, he was able to pay for his entire law school at Michigan. And anyway, um, he did that for about six to eight months, hated it. And finally, he finally decided what he really loved to do was teach uh, skiing for um, hmm. girls particularly. And he, he wasn't a pervert, he just stepped in like girls, little girls. And um, Jesus sounds like he's a pervert, but he wasn't. Yeah. But anyway, um, he um, he started teaching uh, out in Colorado. Started teaching uh, all kinds of kids mainly. Well, there are a lot so, of perverts out in Colorado, he, as you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially at your address. But anyway, um, he uh, he found something he loved, and she wants to scratch. He's been doing that for about ten or fifteen years now. He's old, but. Uh, Incidentally, he goes so, down to Chile, Chile or someplace down in South America during the summer months here, where it's winter there, and he teaches down there. So, I know so many people have have done that. Um, several of my uh, lawyers who had successful careers in law um, made it, and then decided they wanted to be history teachers. So, I mean, it just depends what you want to do. And then maybe they wouldn't have twenty years ago become history teachers, but now they're scratching their itch and they're happy. I think your itch changes as you go through life. Mine was really lucky because, um, of course, I came to this rather relatively lately. I didn't get, I didn't get my PhD until I was like 35. And so I started teaching when I was 35, but uh, at the university level. Um, but I didn't really know I had an itch until I started teaching. And then I realized I loved it because I could, I could have fun, you know, telling dirty jokes and also imparting yeah. some knowledge about <clears throat> grammar. To, to students. I'm losing my voice. I apologize. That's okay. You can uh, go ahead and clear your throat if you need to. Do you have any water <clears> handy? Because I don't want no, you to I, that, keel over and get totally dehydrated. Don't you worry. I'm, I'm alive and vigorous. I see. <laughs> Yet again. So is scratching, one of the questions I had, and I've asked you this before, is scratching your itch a luxury? There are people who have to work jobs that, oh, yeah. you know. It is definitely. It is definitely. But you can scratch your itch by, you know, adjusting your, uh, I must say your needs, but your wants. You know, you may you want to live in a mansion, but you can live in a, a two-bedroom apartment uh, in order to do the things you want to do. But uh, again, I'm not proselytizing my beliefs to, to anyone. Well, but the fact is you've seen thousands of students come through, right? So, it's, and, you know, and you have people who've chased, uh, scratched their itch who uh, live in mansions you have people who and they're happy and they're happy and, yeah and if the forest ranger most likely unless he or she oh. was it he um he you know made an absolute fortune prior to becoming a forest ranger probably isn't living in a mansion no do you see not. any difference in the long-term outcomes for these folks that actually go for what they what their their itch is versus those who grind it out yeah i think a lot less regret a lot less regret. People who, who finally have the temerity, the uh, chutzpah, uh, to uh, 
to scratch your itch. And sometimes scratching your itch means making the wealth and a lot of money. I know one of my dear, dear friends who I just love, he's um, become extraordinarily wealthy, but and he's happy. That's what it makes turns him on. He doesn't. He, he does it more for not, not for making the money, but for putting deals together. That makes him really happy, and, and it gives him a sense of accomplishment. Good, good for him. Yeah, Go and I think it. that's kind of an important uh, corollary to scratch your itch, and that is it's not necessarily about the outcome. It's not about standing atop Everest so much as it is the process of getting getting there. Oh, it's, always, it's always the journey, not the goal, you know. To me, that someone who sits in, in front of TV and watches expeditions to Mount Everest uh, and wants to do it and just sits there and watches and reads about it and how various paths you could take, it's kind of a failure. However, the guy that reads about it, saves enough money, goes to Nepal, starts up, gets to the first base camp, starts feeling the uh, oxygen deprivation, gets to the second base camp, can't do it, can't go on, can't ascend Mount Everest. He to me, is a complete uh, success because he tried. Yes, you, you have to try in life. You can't always scratch your itch. You can't always yeah. succeed. And most of the times you can't succeed in a lot of the things you do. Yeah. But at least what, you tried, and that's the key. You've got to try. How does this tie into the, and we did a, a video on this, of the Carpe Diem, Carpe Rosem, the seize the day, gather the flowers? Mm -hmm. Well, to me, it's the fact that um, you should make every effort when you're young, like... Uh, you know that great poem, uh, that age is best, which is the first, when youth and blood are warmer. That, uh, what is that, that, uh, to the virgins make much of time, Robert yeah. Herrick, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I think people, when they're young, 20, 30, they should, uh, uh, you know, seize the day, pick the flower before it, well, it's carpe diem, carpe rosum. Well, I think that was a really nice summary. Thank you. You're welcome.